Hello and welcome. We're going to give it a couple minutes before kicking off just to let more people trickle in. So if you're rushing over from another meeting, feel free to go grab yourself some water or coffee. Um, I'm going to drop a quick question into our Q&A chat um, just as we're waiting. Would love to hear where everyone is tuning in from today. I hope some of you are experiencing warm weather. For those just tuning in, we will kick off in just about a minute from now, just letting some other people trickle in and get set. All right, so hello again, everyone, and welcome to our first Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield Pharmacy webinar. We are so excited you decided to spend some time with us this afternoon, and we have a great webinar lined up for you today on the GLP-1 trend. I am your host, Kristen Wachelchuk, and I'm a marketing manager on the pharmacy team. And today I am joined by our wonderful speaker, Morgan McCarthy, who is a board certified pharmacist and one of our clinical account consultant pharmacists on the team. We will also be joined during our questions portion of this webinar by Amy Handelman, who is our director of enterprise pharmacy growth. And just before we get started as some housekeeping, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the Q&A and I will receive them all. Um, you can find this in the bar at the top of your screen. We won't be answering any questions during the presentation, but we will leave some time at the end to get to a few questions. So with that again, thank you for joining us today, and I will now be turning it over to Morgan. Thank you, Kristen, for the introduction. I also wanted to take a brief moment to thank everybody that took the time out of their day to attend our first pharmacy webinar. So we wanna to continue to be good partners and provide educational tools on what's happening in the market and the value Excellus brings in managing these trends. So your attendance is very much appreciative and we look forward to your feedback from today and doing more of these webinars in the future. So just a quick overview of the agenda today. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the market overview, specifically looking into diabetes and obesity. Uh, discuss the GLP-1 drugs that everybody's been talking about, then review the pharmacy programs we have available that help mitigate the trend for our clients, and discuss the uh, value that integrating medical and pharmacy benefits can have for our diabetes and obese population. We'll wrap it up at the end and have a question and answer section um, to complete the webinar. So first, just wanted to reiterate our mission and vision at Excel's Blue Cross Blue Shield. So our vision is to help people in our communities live healthier and more secure lives through access to high quality and affordable health care. And our vision is to be recognized and valued as the community and business resource for healthcare security through financial strength, effective cost control, ease of use, and commitment to health improvement. And you'll see that through our programs. Um, that we bring to our clients. So first, uh, getting into the market overview, 
why are we here talking about this GLP-1 trend? Um, before we really start, I did want to mention that the information covered in the webinar is really focused on our commercial populations. We really won't touch on any um, regulated markets. So why are we here talking about this trend? Um, we look at the un unanticipated demand uh, we saw from GLP-1s over the last few years from intense pharma lobbying, direct consumer advertising and social media marketing that has led to a significant increase in spend on this class of medications. Um, so the data on the screen is from our health plan. Um, we have the diabetes GLP-1 spend on the left and the weight loss GLP-1 spend on the right. Um, so we are experiencing the same thing that everyone else in the market is. Um, our diabetes spend did trend up um, roughly 42% in 2022. Uh, we were trending lower than uh, national data that was up around 60%. Um, and then when we added edits in 2023, we did continue to see the spend increase, um, but at a uh, slower rate, so up 20% from 2022 to 23. Uh, for the weight loss drugs, these really took off towards the end of 2022. Um, and really into 2023. And so you can see the increase in spend in that time. This could be due to a few different things. Um, like I mentioned, we did add edits on our diabetes products. Uh, so really shifting away from any inappropriate prescribing. Um, and now there's also more products available in the market um, for weight loss uh, with ZepBound being approved towards the end of 2023. And so when we look at these trends, really um, outside of the fact that we had a lot of marketing and social media attention on these drugs, uh, really have to look at the populations that we're targeting to be treated by these drugs uh, to get a full picture on why the spend is increasing so much. So diabetes and obesity are two huge trend drivers. Uh, when we look at healthcare spend. So 38 million Americans have diabetes. That's roughly one in every 10 individuals. They contribute over $300 billion in annual healthcare spend. And that doesn't account for the additional $90 billion that's lost due to productivity. Uh, members with diabetes typically have uh, healthcare costs that are twice as high for those without, um, and they're also at increased risk for developing other comorbidities such as heart disease, kidney disease, blindness, um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, and it's reported by the CDC that roughly 90% of adults diagnosed with type 2 diabetes are considered overweight or obese. So there, there are several factors to consider um, when you're looking at treatment regimens for these diabetic patients. When we look at the obesity market, um, this also is a big population, roughly 42% of adults and 20% of children in the U.S. are considered obese, uh, with that number expected to increase up over 50% within the next five to six years. So the, the graph to the left shows the disease prevalence of both obesity in orange and diabetes in blue uh, over the last several decades. So you can see there has been a steep increase in the obesity uh, percentage since uh, 2010, um, and again, expected to be over 50% or one in two individuals by 2030. The diabetes population hasn't had as steep of an increase, uh, but we are seeing more and more patients diagnosed with diabetes year after year, um, and that number is expected to get over 15% within the next five years. So obesity also contributes a large um, number for healthcare spend over $700, $700 billion annually, and it also increases your risk of death and other comorbidities. Again, heart disease. Um, here we see increased risk for diabetes, for cancer. Um, so there are a lot of factors, again, uh, that are increased with obesity. Uh, and it, we really have seen the outlook on obesity shift from being a cosmetic 
issue to treating a chronic disease because they they do have all these additional risk factors. Um, so it's viewed now that we need to treat these patients um, like they have a chronic condition. Uh, so now that we have these new drugs available, these GLP ones, um, you know they've seen great market success. Um, and it's estimated that there will be a $100 billion market for these drugs by 2030. So we talk about GLP-1s, but what are these drugs? So they're glucagon-like one peptide receptor agonists, and they have been used to treat diabetes um, since 2005, but more recently have been approved for the treatment of weight loss. Uh, the first one received approval in 2017, and we've seen two additional products um, come to market since then. Uh, so these drugs mimic a hormone in our body that targets several different organs. So for diabetes, it helps lower blood sugar um, and then helps aid in weight loss uh, by first slowing down your stomach emptying so you feel fuller for longer, and second, sends signals to your brain, um, reducing any hunger or craving. So tricks your brain into thinking that you're full. These drugs are both highly effective um, when used for diabetes and weight loss when they are used appropriately. So they are uh, required to be used with diet and exercise. That's how the drugs were studied. Um, that's how the drugs are recommended in the guidelines. Um, and that's how the patients will see the greatest success with these medications. Uh, so the American Diabetes Association did update their guidelines um, towards the end of 2022 to recommend GLP-1 therapies as first-line options for certain diabetic patients. So it had historically been that if you're diagnosed with diabetes, that everybody would start on metformin. Um, and now it's more of a patient-specific and more holistic approach. So they look at, does the patient have heart disease? Does the patient have kidney disease? Is the patient overweight? Uh, and that would qualify them to receive a GLP-1 as first-line therapy. There are also adult endocrine guidelines um, for the weight loss treatment. They do incorporate GLP-1s in their recommendation, but it's not as first line. And they always recommend that lifestyle modifications are done uh, prior to and uh, while they're taking the medication. Uh, pediatric endocrine guidelines also were just updated to include these GLP-1 drugs. Um, so now we have GLP-1 drugs being incorporated into treatment plans um, for both pediatric and adult patients for obesity. So just because these medications, <clears throat> excuse me, are highly effective and frequently utilized doesn't mean they come without their risk factors or side effects. Um, so we do see that up to 50% of patients experience those GI side effects. Uh, we most uh, hear about their nausea and vomiting, uh, but it could be so severe that the member would stop taking the medication because it's affecting their daily life. Um, also with the delayed gastric emptying, this is a way that the drug works, um, but sometimes it can delay it too much, um, leading to stomach paralysis. Um, we've also seen issues when a member has to have a procedure, they still have food left in their stomach, um, leading to increased risk for aspiration and infections with those uh, procedures. There also has been a known risk for thyroid cancer since these products um, launched back in 2005 for diabetes. Uh, so that is on the label of all of the products. So the table here just shows all of the available GLP-1s. Um, the ones that are bolded are the products that have both a um, diabetes product and a weight loss product. The majority of these medications are injectables. Ribelsis is the only oral option um, and is only indicated for the treatment of diabetes. So these drugs are typically on average over a thousand dollars a month. Uh, so, and with diabetes, you know, we typically think of these drugs as maintenance therapies, and um, patient remember would be on them long term. 
Um, so, you know, that's the big unknown for the weight loss products. Uh, and typically when we see a drug that has a thousand dollar price tag, yes, it's expensive, but we wouldn't think it would increase a trend for any of our groups if, you know, five people, 10 people were on it. But when we're looking at the population size of the diabetic population and the obese population, um, that's when it can become a problem. So <clears throat> when I speak of the um, unknown length of therapy for weight loss, you know, what are we seeing in the market? Um, you know, how long are patients staying on these therapies? Uh, so there was a study done by Prime Therapeutics that looked at all their members uh, taking Wagovi, and they found that only a third of their population were still taking the drug a year later. So they had a steep increase in pharmacy costs, um, but didn't see any um, reduction in the medical costs because these are likely to happen uh, when the members on therapy long term. Um, they didn't report on, you know, the reasons that the member stopped taking the medication, whether it was due to side effects, due to cost. Um, but again, these products are over a thousand dollars a month, um, and the studies show that they need to be on these products for three to five years to really um, see that clinical benefit with reducing blood pressure, reducing um, any cardiac events and whatnot. So they also stated that when the members stop the medication, um, there's typically a lot of weight gain within the first year. Um, again, this was shown in the clinical trials for these drugs that when a patient stopped taking the medication, um, they did see weight gain. So again, just reiterating that these drugs are an option for our members, um, but they're only a temporary solution and making those lifestyle modifications are really what's key um, for long-term success. Um, and we are seeing uh, similar um, rates of discontinuation with our uh, population. So with the great um, market success that these GLP-1 drugs have had, there's been increased pharmaceutical activity in this space. Um, so we see at least nine drugs in development for weight loss. Um, it's probably more at this point. Uh, but the oral GLP-1, the ribelsis, um, is expected to gain a weight loss indication within the next six months to a year. Um, so this can expand treatment into a different population that uh, maybe didn't want to use an injection. Um, the manufacturers are also looking at getting label expansions um, for or outside indications of weight loss. Um, so they're studying in liver disease, kidney disease, looking at reducing cardiac events, um, osteoarthritis, obstructive sleep apnea. Um, Wagovi did just get a label expansion for uh, reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events. Um, so it does, again, open up the drug to another population of patients. Um, a lot of the times these patients would have met criteria um, without the label expansion if they were obese and had previous um, cardiac events. Um, and I know that ZepBound is also undergoing their cardiovascular outcomes trial. Um, since the drug is newer on the market, the results aren't expected for a few more years, but um, they are looking into it as well. So now that we have gone over um, the diabetes and obesity market, um, talked about what the drugs are, what are we doing um, to help mitigate the trend? So I'll and highlight some of- interrupt, Morgan. Oh, yep. Sorry. No, you're um, good. I've gotten a couple questions from people in the chat about slides not moving. And so I just wanted to say, if you click ahead while Morgan is presenting, just make sure to click the sync to presenter and it'll sync back up with the slides that Morgan is on. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone can see my slides moving though, right? They're moving for me. So, okay. Yep. <laughs> 
All right, so I will highlight the programs um, Excellus has available, um, but I just wanted to mention that we are not um, discussing all of the available solutions we offer. We did want to focus more on the programs that um, have an impact on the diabetes and GLP-1 trend. Um, with that said, um, here are the programs that we'll be talking about. I will um, just mention SmartRx Assist. So this is our newest program that we are going to be launching. Um, doesn't specifically pertain to diabetes, but I know there were um, a lot of interest and questions on our cost saving solutions. Um, so if you have any questions on this, please add them in the chat. We can get you more information after the meeting um, or can reach out to your account reps that will provide um, some more information on this. Um, so switching gears back into the programs that um, specifically target the diabetes and GLP-1 trend, um, we do have some value add programs that I'll go a little high level in and then we'll take a deeper dive into our utilization management strategies and um, the pharmacy concierge program. So the patient assurance program is available um, and it is aimed to combat the rising cost of diabetic drugs. So if you elect to take this program, the member will pay no more than $25 for eligible drugs. So really lower the cost for the member with hopes to increase adherence um, and help them manage their chronic condition. The diabetes remote monitoring is another value add program and helps those with diabetes manage their blood sugar. So they are provided with a um, blood glucose monitor and their readings get sent to a pharmacist and the care management team. They can take a look at um, how the blood glucose readings are and uh, provide any um, information or support for the member. Um, and, you know, if they're way off, they can get involved with the doctor and adjusting the medications. And then Rational Med um, is another one of the programs we have. It looks at um, cost avoidance and helps avoid hospitalization and adverse events. Um, and it layers on top of our utilization management strategy. So now we'll get a little bit more into our utilization management strategies and the pharmacy concierge. So our utilization management strategies are embedded in our pharmacy benefits. Um, they are in place to make sure the right member is getting the right care at the right time. Um, our strategies are clinically focused and involve um, prior authorization, step therapy. Um, we also have quantity limits, generic advantage programs. Um, so we you know, really um, have these programs in place to make sure that the most appropriate drugs are given based on approved diagnosis and to ensure we're driving utilization of the highest clinical value, lowest cost drugs. When we look specifically at our uh, utilization management strategies for GLP-1s, we do have two distinct policies for the diabetes drugs and then for the weight loss drugs separately. Uh, so with the weight loss drugs, we do have BMI requirements in our uh, prior authorization. So if you're 30 and above or 27 with comorbidities, um, so you know, do you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, have you had a heart attack? Um, and that is coupled with, uh, we require proof of um, enrollment and participation in a comprehensive weight management program. Um, so we do this because, again, this is how the drugs were studied. Uh, this is how someone can get the maximum benefit of these drugs. But we also want our members to learn those lifestyle modifications. Uh, so we review every comprehensive program that's submitted with the PA on an individual basis. Um, so we look to make sure that the comprehensive weight management program addresses a nutrition aspect, um, an activity or physical activity aspect, and then also addresses the behavioral modifications that are needed. Um, this will also give the member support so they can really understand um, what it entails to start one of these medications. Because again, there's a lot of side effects. Um, you do have to make adjustments in your diet and exercise to 
uh, try to avoid those. And again, um, that's how you're going to get the best uh, benefit of these drugs. The policy also has uh, quantity limits um, so that they align with the FDA approved dosing. Our diabetes policy, um, the prior authorization requires a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Um, it also involves step therapy for our non-preferred products. So there are um, our preferred products have additional cardiac and renal benefits. So we would want our members to be on these drugs um, and step through those before we would approve any non-preferred products. Also has quantity limits so that you're not getting more than the FDA approved dosing. Um, both of these policies also have recertification um, criteria. Uh, it's different for the weight management policy, uh, depends on the drug. So these drugs typically have to be titrated, so they would start at a much lower dose um, and increase to the maintenance dose where they would see the optimal weight loss. So for Zepbound and Wagovi, the initial approval would be seven months. Um, and to get recertified, you would have to show that you had lost a um, specific amount of weight. Uh, we require 5% and then still be enrolled in the comprehensive weight management program. Every um, recertification thereafter would be six month timeframes. For the diabetes products, it is a one year uh, length. So we have these policies in place, but we are continuously monitoring the market to ensure that we are adapting and pivoting when necessary. So there have been uh, manufacturing issues since the launch of Wagovi. Uh, the unprecedented demand has caused the shortages to continue. Um, and most recently, those shortages are in the starter doses. So in response to these shortage, we have updated our criteria to not approve new starts. Uh, we do this for a few different reasons. Um, first is we want to still ensure that the members who are successful on these medications currently will still continue to have access. Um, you know, if we approve everybody um, when there's no drug available, then no one is going to be able to get the medication. Uh, second is because then these members are not safely and reliably able to titrate the medication to um, that dose. So we don't want members skipping doses um, and having more side effects. And we also don't want members on uh, doses of the medication that result in no clinical value, um, which would be wasteful spend um, for our groups. So it did just want to mention too, hot off the press that Zepbound this week uh, announced a shortage in all the strengths of their medication. Um, and this is expected to last at least through um, the second quarter of 2024. Um, so we're looking at our policies around Zepbound as well. So when we talk about our utilization management strategies, you know, are they performing well? Um, our team is reviewing um, a ton of these cases, is roughly 2,500 GLP-1 reviews per week. Um, and in 2023, we did see um, the commercial savings of over $14.5 million uh, with our GLP-1 strategies. So the diabetes uh, specifically had roughly 7.6 million um, and the weight loss GLP-1 savings was a little over 6.8 million. So again, this is not inclusive of all of our diabetic utilization management strategies, just um, specifically looking at the GLP-1 policies that we put in place um, last year. So I really did see um, good success in uh, preventing any off-label use and producing savings for our groups. Uh, now shifting into um, our pharmacy concierge program. So this is our innovative strategy to control spend that has had a significant impact for our employer groups over the last five years um, since we created the program. This is included for our fully insured book and a buy-up program for our self-funded groups, um, but we do put a guarantee on the savings. So this program focuses on controlling costs by driving appropriate utilization of medications. You can see in 2023, our 
groups had a total savings of over $19 million. Um, over the last two years, the groups with pharmacy concierge had a 12% trend compared to those without had a 25% trend. Um, when we look at diabetes specifically, this is typically the top um, drug class where we see the most savings. Um, so over the last two years, the diabetes trend with pharmacy concierge has been much lower um, than groups without the pharmacy concierge. So we typically see um, for the last two years that there was about a 4% difference in cost per script there. Um, so there are a lot of diabetic interventions for this program. Um, you know, we have GLP-1 um, interventions. They're looking to now to um, close some gaps in care. Um, so this product, like I said, has seen great success. Um, and if you have any additional questions, again, please add them to the chat um, or feel free to reach out. Um, so now that we've gone over the pharmacy programs we have to mitigate these trends, uh, we did just want to mention some of the other value programs that are valuable when you integrate your medical and pharmacy benefits. Uh, so really, we put a focus on member-centric care. Um, so we have developed a comprehensive diabetes management program that leverages technology to reach members where they're at with the right level of care and support. So we have an entire um, team dedicated to diabetes care management. Um, that team includes a pharmacist so they can evaluate the drug therapy. Um, and when you have medical and pharmacy integrated, uh, the pharmacist can look at the medications the member is on. Um, they can assess for any drug interactions. They can check adherence um, and really just answer any question, any medication questions. There's a health coach that helps motivate member to use the self-care tools we have available, a medical director that uh, gets involved with the more complex diabetes management. We have a registered dietitian that is involved with the nutrition aspect. Uh, the social worker helps with any social or economic barriers. Um, and then we have the registered nurse care managers that really um, provide the coordinated care, um, diabetes education, support, coaching, really um, tackle it from every angle uh, to empower the members to manage the disease and improve their quality of life. Um, so they leverage the WellFrame app um, and the remote monitoring so that you know the member can log on to the welfare map. They might not always be able to pick up the phone, but they, um, you know, a lot of people have smartphones. They can log into the app, ask a question um, and get a response, or there are certain articles or, uh, you know, helpful hints to um, help better manage these uh, diseases. So, our members are brought into the program um, either through claims identifiers, uh, they can have a direct referral or a member can opt in themselves and engagement um, levels really varies, you know, on the member specifically or their health status. Um, and the remote monitoring, um, again, the care manager will receive the um, blood glucose readings and they really take a deep dive to help um, prevent any long-term complications there. Um, so we also have uh, partnered with ThriveWell. So again, this is included for our fully insured um, business and is a buy-up for our self-funded groups. Um, but ThriveWell is a platform that focuses on well-being. So through our partnership, um, it gives our <clears throat> members the tools to make small everyday changes to their well-being um, that's focused on the area they want to improve most. So if a member has diabetes, um, if a member has obesity, they can really tailor their approach to their specific condition. So they have certain daily tips and healthy habits that um, support their behavioral changes. Uh, the media library really helps to excite and engage the members um, to reach their goals. And the digital coaching 
um, gives them an additional resource uh, to help them break their goals into smaller, more achievable steps. Um, they also uh, have FoodSmart offered through Thrive, Thrive Well. Um, so Food Smart is an innovative nutrition offering that supports food accessibility, um, chronic condition prevention, and digital nutrition interventions to help reduce healthcare costs and improve employee health. Um, so here, you know, the member can log on and again choose which um, condition they have. They take a short quiz that really um, gets down to the details of uh, what the dietary habits are, you know, what the food accessibility is of the member. Uh, do they have any other conditions that they might have to look out for? Um, and from there, the app will be able to customize a bunch of recipes and provide them to the member so that they have um, access to these and can, uh, you know, have an easy resource for providing food options for them. So we know, again, that making these lifestyle modifications is going to be key to long term success for our members. Uh, so just wanted to wrap it up uh, with a few key considerations um, for the webinar. So first, again, a continued focus on access, affordability, and quality. Uh, so these GLP-1 drugs are highly effective and appropriate in the right population. Uh, so we want to make sure we're providing access to these medications for those members who really need it. Uh, and to reimagine conventional weight loss management. So again, um, we're seeing that shift in the view of obesity from a cosmetic issue to a chronic condition. Um, so we want to be able to provide support to the members um, that have obesity um, and be able, you know, again, to allow them access to uh, whether that be medications or support um, to help them um, control their condition. Uh, again, a big focus on mitigating trend. So our policies um, in utilization management will continue to focus on, um, you know, not allowing inappropriate use of these medications um, and deliver cost savings to our groups. And we will continue to um, have a holistic member centric approach um, and meet the member where they're at so that we can provide uh, the best programs and um, solutions for them. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Morgan. That was such an insightful presentation. Um, we will now be transitioning and opening it up for questions. So again, next to the chat, so it's not in the actual chat form, there is a Q&A box in the top bar across your screen. If you have any questions, you can put them in there um, and I will be collecting all of those uh, to run through. You have about seven minutes, so we can answer a few questions. And I'll give a couple minutes just for people to type anything in. So Kristen, if I can just add, if you yeah. feel more comfortable reaching out to the, your account manager, um, feel free to do so about any of the programs or again, anything specific specific to the GLP-1 drug class, we can answer it that way as well. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have anything coming in. Um, so again, please reach out to your account rep if you do have questions about anything talked about today um, and thank you again for joining us we really appreciate having you here a recording of this webinar will be going out so if anyone on your team was interested in hearing today's webinar but was unable attend to attend please feel free to forward that to them and thank you and i hope you all have a great rest of your day thank you yeah. bye